on to sketch number two then. And as I'm sure you recognise, this is the Sydney Opera House in Australia. And compared to that first sketch, obviously there's a lot more structure, uniformity to this, much cleaner lines. We've got to have to be more careful over the shapes that we put in, the shapes of these really kind of distinctive iconic sail structures. Now compositionally, I like this again as well. So it ticks all those boxes for the rule of thirds. You've got the horizon, which is on a third. You've got the opera house, which is a third of the way across. So compositionally, it's quite nice. It's quite strong. I also like the contrast between the green and uh, the kind of organic green shapes and the green color. And then this orangey peachy color stonework. I think that will work quite nice. I like the orange on the uh, glass there. I think we can maybe exaggerate that and just make it a, a little bit more punchy. And I think with a bit of blue for the sky and for the, the water, I think this could make quite a nice little pleasing sketch. So what are the challenges here? Well, it's the kind of scene that if you just start drawing out with, without giving any kind of thought to the overall size that you're going to draw it to, you can potentially you know, end up with too much opera house and too little kind of supporting act or too much of this and then not enough room to put the opera house on. So I think it's going to pay just to give a little bit of thought about what size that we want to uh, draw this main structure out at and maybe just plot out some very basic points, just two or three basic points to give us the overall composition. These sail shapes, potentially quite challenging. We need to get them in a good position relative to one another and a good size relative to one another. I think if we can get this first one in a good position, that will make the rest of them that much easier. So let's get started on this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in a horizon line. So a third of the way down the paper, just a rough horizon line. Don't worry if it's not straight. Try and get it parallel to the bottom of your paper, but it doesn't really matter, certainly not at this stage. And then the next thing to think about is what is the overall size that I want to sketch to? So I'm going to keep the Opera House quite small, and I'm just looking at what I think will be the overall length. So I'm going to go with a, around about that length for the entire uh, bottom of the structure. So the sails are going to kind of fit in this part here. So based on that width, I'm just going to think about what is the height roughly of this bottom part of the building and then if we look at the tallest sail it breaks the top of it if we draw a line down it breaks this distance the length of this roughly in half so the top sail is going to be somewhere around about there and then the distance between the top sail and the top of this building how much greater is it than this distance here it's probably not quite that high it's probably somewhere around about there i would say that's just a very quick, simple kind of comparative measure that I'm making as I look at this scene. And then instead of drawing in any individual sails at this stage, I'm just going to look at, imagine drawing a line between the top sail and the point of the bottom sail, kind of getting that angle there. And then I can see that this one or this group of three here, what sort of angle do they make? So that's a bit of a flatter angle and they roughly come out to around about the edge of the edge of the bottom part of the building there. So just with these three points in, particularly this one, this one, and this one, it's just going to help me draw the overall structure with a fairly reasonably accurate proportion. It's not going to be too far off. It doesn't need to be deadly accurate, but it's not going to be too far off. So now let's look at this kind of main front sail shape. So I'm just more confident now that I can put that in. it's got this this is the kind of really iconic almost looks like the front of a ship so we can get that in there and then once that one's in place it just becomes a little bit easy then to put the next one in so I'm just looking at where this line breaks this line here where does it break into this line here so it's around about there and then this line sweeps down to around about that position and then there's obviously kind of a thickness to that a few lines within there and then this top one steeper angle coming down to a point here a little bit lower down than that isn't it and then again we've got the, the thickness because we can see inside of that and then this really nice cast shadow inside so that's going to be nice to put in now I can 
just strengthen the top of the roof of this structure and then it kind of goes off to the side doesn't it dips into a bit of an angle there and then goes into this lower section here and then we've got this top row of windows in so I'm just going to put that in as a kind of a horizontal very thin rectangle one single rectangle and then I can just break that shape up and just put a little bit of tone in there with the pen and then we've got another one so this is primarily a sketch all of these are going to be primarily ink sketches maybe apart from the first one that was I suppose you could say that was half watercolor half uh, half sketch but this is primarily now a sketch so we want to put some tone in and, and some shading in uh, and then what we'll do is just add a splash of color with the watercolor so if you just kind of take that mentality of being primarily a sketch that then will help you dictate how much ink work you put in and you don't want to go overboard but you do want to put a little bit of ink work in and not rely solely on the watercolor to fill in the blank spaces so with this little shape at the bottom I've just left, you hope you can see that, just some white little hit and miss areas just to represent some figures that are going uh, walking to and fro at the bottom. And we've got another window area down this bottom here. Again, just break that shape up. I don't want to make it too uniform, too neat, not when it's at that distance. Again, just break the bottom of that shape up. And then we've got another sail structure. Let's put a little bit of detailing on this for the glass. So this obviously is the one that is in the foreground. So I'm going to put more detail. Well, when I say foreground, it's obviously the one that's closest to us. So we're just going to put a bit more detail on for this. Strengthen that line there. And then look at this real nice strong cast shadow. I definitely want to put some of that in with the ink. I don't want to just rely on the watercolour for that one. Same for this one. So let's put a little bit of shadow in for this bit of the cast shadow. Now these ones should be a lot simpler to put in because we've got reference points on this side to help see where they extend to. So I can look at an angle between this point and this one and it's going to be about here and then goes into this or a little bit further over even. I'm just looking at where it breaks into this structure here of the front sail shape. And then the next one you can have a look at that little negative space there, just this space between the two sails. That'll just help you put it in a bit more quickly and a bit more accurately. And again, some nice cast shadows within those. So we don't need much more than that on the main structure I don't think. The rest is going to be pretty quick and easy to put in. So we've got the waterline here, I'm just going to give a little impression of the trees there and an impression of the buildings at the back. Waiter line again, so I mentioned this in the first lesson but stuff that's in the background you want to use the side of the pen, lay flatter against the paper and that will give you that more kind of hit and miss line. And then we've got a tree here. So this is quite a nice tree that we can maybe put in the foreground. So just looking and describing the overall basic shape. And then we can put some branches in. Really, really simple to put in. It's a real 
hit and miss very very faint lines just on this building here because it's on the outer edges of the of the sketch anyway uh, and it's in the distance so I want it to be really really light just a few little dots just to represent the windows all right I think that will do pretty much I don't think we need much more than that I'll just add a little splash of color and uh, see how that looks so the first color I'm gonna put in is kind of a peachy orange color for this bottom one so I'm gonna to go to the yellow ochre and touch of alizarin crimson with that so let's see what that's like yeah that's quite a nice color I think that works quite well so this side is a little bit lighter than this side so we'll we'll put that in for that one and then we'll just strengthen the mix slightly for this side A little bit in for the fence at the bottom. Maybe just just to vary it. Let's add a little touch of yellow. I probably could have done with cleaning that yellow, uh, that cadmium yellow first, but it's easy enough just to clean with the brush. So it's only subtle, but it's just to just to vary it ever so slightly. I mean, maybe take some of this colour into this uh, into this beach area here. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've switched brushes as well. So this has got a chisel edge. And that's not for any other reason that I'd uh, filled up three pens with barrels of water. So it's just to save me changing the water. It's not because a chiseled edge is more suitable for this. It really doesn't matter. So just with the burnt sienna and a little bit of the uh, ultramarine, I'm just going to mix up a bit of a darker colour while I've got it and just touch it into this area here more blue maybe just again to vary it just along the bottom edge there let's just strengthen that line the water's edge what about a slightly darker version of that color just on this left hand edge it's not quite as much in the sun Now in this glass bit here, and this to me is the focal point right here, and I can see some real nice oranges and yellows, some copper colours in there. So I want to maybe exaggerate those a little bit. So we just clean that up, give your brush a little clean. And I'm going to go for the alizarin crimson and the cadmium yellow. So real strong bowl colour that, and I can see a little bit of uh, a little touch of green in there. So before I add that in, I'm just going to add a little bit of brown just to vary this side of it. A little bit of blue just to darken it while it's still wet. And then. Just going to get a little bit of green, just a touch. Just take a bit of that copper colour into it. And just again, while it's still wet, I think get even bolder with that. There we go. It's just a little touch into that corner. And what about it? Clean the brush and a bit of yellow on its own, just on that side. And this is just kind of playing about with things. It may work, it may not work. You know, the better you get, the more you practice, the more likely it is to work first time. But it doesn't matter if it doesn't work because the whole point of a sketchbook is to experiment and to kind of stretch your comfort zone, expand your horizons, all that, just so you, you start to learn what works and what doesn't. And every failed experiment is a success, really, because you know what doesn't work, you've 
by definition you've uh, got closer to finding out what does work so I'm just adding a stronger color there just along the bottom strengthen it along that side as well okay and while I've got that color where else can I see that there's a more muted version of it on this side let me just dab a little bit in for that and I did see yeah some over here okay and then I'm gonna get a bit more of a bluey grey so a little bit of the ultramarine and then just using some of the other colors on your palette you just want to make a, a kind of a mud color but with a, a tint of blue so it's a muddy gray color but with a tint of blue that's a little bit green isn't it probably a bit too too much yellow on the palette so I'm just gonna add a little touch of red in there there we go that's it something like that anyway and then I'm just gonna add in these areas here that's quite a nice color where else can I use that maybe a little bit on this building here in the background So real pale colours because it's in the background as well. There's one poking through just here. Nice little bit of colour. There isn't really any oranges on this one, but that doesn't mean we can't put any on. A little bit of a yellow ochre colour just to put on a couple of the sails. Okay, let's just tone that down a bit. So it's a little bit too vibrant on its own, the yellow ochre. So I just take one of the other colours in the palette, mix that in a touch. There we go, something like that. And then just want to add a little touch of colour just on some of these sails. Not too much. I'm going to leave the white of the paper to show through as well. I think that's just a little bit strong, so a bit more water. Just pick up some of the colours on the palette and just touch them into the background because it really doesn't matter what colour these are. Okay, and then time for some green. So I'm just going to go into one of the premix greens, but as we already know, it's a little bit too vibrant. So I'm going to add some ultramarine into that. So that's quite a nice bright green, so I'm going to use it for this tree here this kind of foreground tree on its own and then or maybe we can use it on this side as well of this one and then I want a darker green so more of the ultramarine blue maybe a touch of the touch of the brown as well the burnt sienna just to create a darker thicker mix and that's just going to help me silhouette this single tree more importantly the the actual opera house a little bit on this side as well and i think if we just go a little bit stronger again blue yellow making up a thicker mix a bit of brown just to neutralize it I'm just touching some real strong darks just around the outer edges. All right, and then a little bit of blue for the sky and the sea. We just put a bit of the uh, Prussian blue in. So I want bags of water with this, squeezing the brush out as much as possible. 
and again you've got a small brush so don't worry about getting a, a nice neat wash not gonna happen let's start off with the sea let's have a look what that comes out like so getting a bit of water in there let's just add a touch of uh, the ultramarine blue in just a little bit more purpley So I'm just squeezing the brushes as I go as well, just to uh, activate a bit more of the paint that's on the on the nib. Little hit and miss areas are going to be fine because they're going to sort of represent some waves, aren't they? I think they'll actually help. Okay, and then the sky. So I want a lighter wash for the sky, just a kind of a, a little bit of colour in the air. A little bit more purpley, so I'm just gonna put a bit more of the, the ultramarine blue in. I think if I did the alizarin crimson it would be it would be too purple. So lots and lots of water, really, really light wash this. Let's just get a little bit of colour in there, squeezing the brush out. You know, I'm not worried if there's watermarks in the sky and there's, you know, cauliflowers and watery blooms like you would be for a, an actual watercolour. You're using a, a really small brush. You know, it's not the, the, the brush nibs in these pens are not particularly great quality. I find they don't last long either, the, the hair start to splay. It's just to get some colour in, just almost like the way an architect would do uh, an architect's drawing to give an impression, the client an impression of, of what it might look like. just by the horizon there there we go okay there's our second sketch then so definitely step up from the first one in terms of sketching it out you do want to take a little bit of time just to plot out some points just two or three points to help you draw in this main structure with a reasonable shape and proportion there's some things I like about this some things that I could uh, definitely improve on but again when all of the sketches are done we'll come back and uh, take a closer look at this one and just see if there's any bits there that work, which don't, whether this would be worth taking on to uh, a bigger, more, uh, more considered piece of art. Okay, so let's move on to sketch number three. <laughs> 